Hello children. Today we'll be discussing a poem titled For Annie Gregory by W. B. Yeats. W. B. Yeats, William Butler Yeats, was a towering figure in English literature at the turn of the 20th century, not the least because of his poems and plays. Combining an immense knowledge of Irish folklore and Gaelic verse with a self conscious flamboyance, Yeats was largely responsible for convincing the rest of the world that those Irish guys sure can write and that they have a national identity as well. He was elected one of the first senators of the Irish Free State and awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1923. William Butler Yeats died at the age of 73 in uh, 1939. Yeats is generally considered one of the few writers who completed their greatest works after being awarded the Nobel Prize. Such works include The Tower and The Winding Stair and other poems. Yeats was a very good friend of American expatriate poet and Bullingen Prize laureate Ezra Pound. Yeats wrote the introduction of for Rabindranath Tagore's Gitanjali, which was published by the Indian Society. The poem of Annie Gregory is a conversation between a young man and a young woman. They are arguing about each other regarding the real beauty that lies in her. The poem is written for A. Gregory, who might be having golden hair, young man of lies, love appearance, and not the real person. The poet conveys that human beings are incapable of seeing inner beauty. They give importance to external or physical beauty. Only God loves us for ourselves irrespective of what we are. The poet has brought out the difference between loving someone for the external beauty and the inherent inner beauty. The poem can be summarized in following ways. Number 1. State of Despair The young man says that he has been thrown into a state of hopelessness by the young woman's great honey-colored rampart at her ear. Her air is compared to a rampart or a wall built to defend a castle, having a broad top with a walkway. Number two, true love. The young woman says that she can get a hair dye and dye her hair in brown or black or carrot color. She wants to do so because a young man in despair may love her for her own sake and not for the yellow color of her hair. Number three, love of God. The young man says that he heard an old religious man announce solemnly the previous night that he had found a passage from the holy book to prove that only God could love the young lady for her own sake and not for her yellow hair. In this poem, the poet describes a conversation between himself and Lady Gregory's granddaughter named Annie Gregory. He tells Annie that her yellow hair is beautiful and that all the young men who claim to be in love with her love her for that hair. In other words, all men love her for her outward appearance and not for her inner beauty. Annie then replies to the poet saying that she can easily dye her hair black or brown or orange and then she would look ugly. If she looked ugly, then perhaps some man would look beyond her appearance and see her for who she really is on the inside. However, the poet quickly assures her that no such thing will happen. It's a universal truth that men always judge women on their physical appearance alone. Besides, if Annie wants to look ugly, she cannot do so, for she is a beautiful person on the inside. The idea of beauty is a cultural conception or one that has been created by human beings themselves. That's why this idea is a very one-dimensional and unchanging. It is believed that women with lighter hair are beautiful, whereas women with darker hair are ugly. This idea is so pervasive that everyone takes it for granted and believes in it blindly. Even Annie Gregory thinks the same way about beauty. She believes that if she dyes her hair black or brown or red, then she will look ugly as opposed to her naturally blonde and honey-colored tresses, tresses, the hair, that makes her look beautiful. However, the poet gives us an alternate idea of beauty. 
He tells Annie that since she is a beautiful person on the inside, she cannot look ugly even if she wants to. She that is beauty exists within us and not outside. However, we do not see Annie responding to the poet's unconventional idea of beauty in this poem. Hence, we do not know if his idea has been accepted by her or not. Throughout the poem, the poet has made a critique of men by repeatedly telling Annie that men love her only for her yellow hair. He has made it clear that men judge women only by their physical appearance. They never look beyond women's appearance and try to get to know women for their personality on their inner beauty. However, the poet believes that this is very wrong. He feels that men should get to know who women are on the inside and appreciate them for the same. He knows who Annie really is and that is why he cannot he can assert that she is a beautiful person on the inside. He only hopes that some other man of her own peer group will also appreciate the same qualities in Annie that he sees in her. But he also knows that this is unlikely to happen. The old religious man that the poet mentions in the last stanza of the poem are the embodiment of wise men. These are men who are very learned and who know all there is to know about this world. The poet's man is also very well read. And, in fact, in one manuscript he has read that only God loves a woman for more than her physical appearance. Of course, the poet does not mean that such a manuscript exists literally. What he means is that it is a universal truth that no man can judge a woman by anything other than her looks. Moreover, it is only God who knows people for what they really are. God also knows that Annie is a beautiful person and therefore God loves her for her sweet and kind nature rather than for her good looks. The tone of this poem is light and relaxed. It seems that the poet and Annie Gregory are in a relaxed mood and are merrily having a fun conversation. They may disagree on the issue at hand, but their conversation never turns into a heated argument. Instead, they each present their point of view in a humorous way. However, this tone does not match with the message that the poem is giving us. It is in fact making quite a feminist argument by saying that men only judge women in terms of their physical appearance. However, its tone is neither aggressive nor disheartened at such a thought. The poem has the following poetic devices. Rhyme scheme. If we divide this poem of 18 lines into three units of six lines each, then each of these units will be found to, found to follow the same simple rhyme scheme. A, B, C, B, D, B. Apostrophe. When the poet addresses the absent audience. In this poem, the poet follows the device of the apostrophe as he is addressing himself to any Gregory, but we the readers never see her at any point in the poem. Metaphor, an implied comparison. The device of metaphor on the fourth line when he compares any Gregory's hair with the ramparts of a castle. Metonymy, this rhetoric device consists of the substitution of the name of an attribute or adjunct for that of the thing meant. In this poem, the poet uses the device of metonymy in the ninth line when he uses the word carrot to mean the color orange while making suggestions about what color she can dye her hair. Compound words. These are found by adding two words into a single one when normally those words are not used together. In this poem, the poet uses this device of the compound word in the 14th line when he combines the words yesterday and night to create the word. Thank you very much.